I looked, I tried to find a, a simple definition of public-private partnership because it seems so uh, 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 kind of hard to pin down. And I came across one from Lynn Sagalan, who's a great observer of public-private partnerships. The negotiated allocation of risk, responsibility, and control between public and private partners. Basta così. That's it. Good. The only problem is you could argue that that's always been the case with any kind of development. Uh, risk, whether it was an urban renewal risk or a, 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 you know, a Faneuil Hall uh, uh, allocation of risk and responsibility and benefit. So uh, one of the things that the public-private partnerships in the most recent generation, let's say since the 1970s, has been uh, kind of uh, paralleled with uh, a different kind of problem, the failure of urban renewal, the failure of the kind of modernist master plan controlling uh, 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 apparatus uh, that served America in the mid, sec in the mid uh, 20th century. So the, 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 the collapse, if you will, of the, the massive state model of urban renewal and large scale projects coincided with the need for a new model to do large scale work. And so in many ways, um, uh, the infrastructure uh, that continues to get built needed a new form of a new set of actors, a new set of inputs, new sources of cash, new sources of guarantees. So the public-private partnership is actually uh, c centuries old. The most recent version uh, responding to different changes in the real estate and legal and financial marketplace. Um, I wanted to say one other, two other things before introducing our, our panelists. First is that um, the High Line. Um, an exquisite piece of architecture, art, sculpture, um, walkway. It's, a, it's an amazing place. I'm sure you all know it. It's exquisite. I hear they had to close it last week because it was too crowded. Um, it's, uh, 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 it's amazing. Uh, it is uh, the reuse of, a, of one generation's infrastructure, which was to deliver and, and, and take care of food and produce. Uh, an industrial infrastructure now, arguably a kind of post-industrial infrastructure with the appropriate uh, new visitors, new users. So in many ways, it's continuing a kind of massive social mission with a different set of, of users, a different set of interests, a, a different, very different political and economic context. Uh, but exquisite it is. It was exquisite when it was empty. As some of you may see pictures of it from the 60s and 70s. It's exquisite now that it's been so beautifully designed. Um, and uh, we're going to discuss those issues today, and I'll introduce the panelists. Um, one, one, one last thought about the, uh, the, the High Line um, and the public-private partnership it has to do with um, uh, the, the kind of allocation of risk between the public and private sectors. Uh, one of the key aspects of a successful or good public-private partnership many scholars say has to do not just with uh, good deal making and public entrepreneurship and uh, the kind of forthrightness between the different players, and there are many players, but also as, uh, um, as Patrice mentioned, uh, as well uh, um, as our other speakers are, about transparency and living in a fishbowl. Uh, uh, when you have a public-private partnership, uh, every decision is subject to various forms of scrutiny, by various sympathetic and unsympathetic uh, observers. Um, and in some ways, that's OK. Right? That is, you know, development in a democracy should have that. And probably the urban renewal projects of the early generation did not have that scrutiny sufficiently. So arguably, there's greater scrutiny now, as I would argue, as a, a design and planning professional, that that scrutiny is, is actually a good thing. Um, and I know developers may like, no, thank you, please, or people in the public sector say, no, 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 too much transparency takes up my time. But in fact, that's the democratic process at work. And a good project will come from that scrutiny uh, by public and private sectors. So uh, with those few thoughts, I will introduce um, our speakers. Uh, Adam Gansner is the Vice President for Planning and Design at Friends of the High Line, where he oversees planning design and construction, as well as uh, acts as a zoning advocate uh, with the city and with, in real estate partnerships. Gansner also directs strategic initiatives for the High Line, including development of an international network of urban industrial reuse and open space projects. Prior to being with the High Line, he worked at 10 Architectos 
and led the architectural design of the 1,400-acre Orange County Great Park, uh, um, a former air base. His professional history has focused on advocating for designing, building, and managing urban scale, mission-driven public-private projects. Uh, he received his uh, Master of Architecture from Yale, a Master of Real Estate Development from here, and a BA from University of Wisconsin. He will be followed by Lisa Ziona Switkin. She is a senior principal at James Corner Field Operations, where she is the principal of many of the complex public realm projects undertaken by the firm. She's led the Highline project since 2004, <whistles> lived with it. Um, she's also led or is leading projects such as the Tongva Park in Santa Monica, uh, the Race Street Pier in Philadelphia, Nicolette Mall in Minneapolis, one of my favorite projects, uh, Miami's Lincoln Road District, another favorite, because they all go back to the 50s, uh, as well as uh, closer to home, uh, South Street Seaport, Domino Sugar Waterfront, and many others. She worked on the master plan for Staten Island's Fresh Kills Park, and um, she is a Rome Prize winner and a fellow of the American Academy. I'm jealous. She has a BA in urban planning from University of Illinois, a Master's of Landscape Architecture from the University of Pennsylvania. Finally, Todd Schliemann is one of the design partners at Ennead Architects. Schliemann, working with his partners, sets the design standards for the firm. His award-winning portfolio is recognized internationally for its architectural excellence, and his work includes the Standard Hotel at the Highline and the iconic uh, Rose Center for Earth and Space at the American Museum of Natural History. Schliemann's work also includes designs for cultural, educational, civic, and scientific institutions, as well as private sector work anywhere you can imagine. He's been a professor critic, lecturer, juror at Columbia, Cornell, Harvard, Syracuse, among other places. And uh, he's a member of the Architectural Advisory Committee at Cornell. Uh, Schliemann received his BA, Bachelor of Architecture from Cornell, and is a fellow of the American Institute of Architects. So Adam, please, and I will call you up as you need to be.